Oh yeah. Welcome back. It's good to see you. Here we go into the limit comparison test for convergence and divergence. We're going to go over how to use it, when to use it, and then we're going to actually use it. So the limit comparison test says this. Given that you have a series from n equals 0 to infinity of something, some sequence, um, and that's the series you're testing, and we know that there's another series that compares nicely to it, um, then, well, if the limit as n goes to infinity of the ratio of these two functions, a sub n and b sub n, is a positive finite number, then we know that they either both converge or diverge. Whoa, that's kind of heavy. It's easier to see it in action. So when do I use this, though, might be the better question. What this basically is all about is what happens if I have a series that I'm like, you know, I think that's a lot like that converging series, but it's actually more than it. It's greater than it. Remember, in direct comparison, you have to be less than converging to converge. What happens if it's more than converging, or you're not really sure if it's more or less than it? You just don't know. Then the limit comparison test is in there. So I put that in quotes. I notice my series is like another. It's a lot like another series, but it does not fit the direct comparison test rules, or I'm unsure if it fits the direct comparison test rules. Then use the limit comparison test to be safe. You literally just take the limit of these two pieces of the series, the functions, if you will, and see if you get a positive finite number. So then if the series you're comparing it to diverges and we get that positive finite number, then the series we want to know about diverges and vice versa with converges. Let's see it in action. All right, so it's a state whether the following series converges or diverges justify. So if we take a look at this thing, I'm looking at that and I'm like, you know, ah, ooh. If we take away the five here, this essentially is a lot like, just bear with me here, root n all over n squared. Like if we take away the 3, the 2, the 5, and we only look at the variables, strip it all away, it's kind of like that, which is equal to 1 over n to the 3 halves. So if I'm doing like a multiple choice test, I'm thinking, well, this is a converging p-series, and therefore this thing likely converges. But I have no idea if this is less than or equal to that converging p-series. I have no clue, and I don't want to go and prove it. So I'm going to start out just like I do with direct comparison. I'm going to start out formally justifying. I would say that since, and let's see if my computer will catch up on that one. I was blistering so fast. All right, that it, it didn't catch up. So since we've got the series from n equals 1 to infinity of 1 over n to the 3 halves uh, is a converging p-series, just like we proved with comparison test, is a converging P series with P equal to 3 halves, which is greater than 1. And now what we're going to do is we're going to take the limit as n goes to infinity of the comparison of these two things. So you're going to get 3 root n all over 2n squared plus 5 all over 1 over n to the 3 halves. You might be like, oh dear goodness, what did I get myself into? This actually simplifies down nicely. Watch. You get the limit as n goes to infinity of, well, now we've got 3 root n all over 2n squared plus 5. When you divide by a fraction, you multiply by the reciprocal. That's n to the 3 halves all over 1. Why am I doing all this? This is the series I'm interested in, that a sub n. This is your b sub n. We're comparing their ratios like what I went over on the previous slide. So if we look at this right here, this simplifies to the limit as n goes to infinity of, that's n to the 1 half times n to the 3 halves is n squared. That's like n to the 1 half. You add those exponents all over 2n squared plus 5. Now, if you need a review of your limits at infinity, I, I truly mean this. Go back to my chapter 1 part towards the end where I'm taking limits as we go to infinity they're very important that you know how to do that because this plus five basically doesn't matter and this simplifies down to three halves so that's a positive finite number so i'll say which is equal to a positive finite number you probably don't have to state that for the bc exam or for your professor but i like to be very formal so this series n equals one the one that we're interested in might take the most time just rewriting that three root n over two n squared plus five converges by limit comparison. By the limit comparison test or limit comparison. That's it. So in this one, we sniffed around a little bit. We went, 
Ooh, that smells like one over end of the three half. If it's a multiple choice test, I'm saying this thing converges with certainty. But to show it formally, we're saying, all right, you know what? We're going to compare it to this P series that converges, one over end of the three halves. It's a lot like it. So, but we're unsure if this is less than or equal to that. We don't want to find out. So we compare them with a ratio. And as we went out to infinity, we solved out that limit. We got a positive finite number. Therefore, we already said this converges. So too does the series we're interested in by limit comparison. So here are the conditions, just like with comparison test, needing to prove that the thing we're comparing to also converges. That's important. Otherwise, if you're comparing it to something and we don't know why it converges or diverges, or if it does or not, there's no sense in comparing. So we make that comparison, um, and then we state the test that we used and make our conclusion. So why does the limit comparison test make sense? Right, I'm going to go over another example after this, but let's just stop and, and think about why it makes sense. If you look at this thing, what we're basically saying is, let's call this thing a sub n, and let's call this thing b sub n. What we found here is that the limit as n goes to infinity, in this particular case of a sub n over b sub n, we took the ratio of them. We took that ratio, we went out to infinity, and we said, you know what? It's going to be 3 halves, which is basically like saying 3 halves of converging, or 3 halves times converging as we go out to infinity. We're saying that this thing is a 3 to 2 ratio compared to this. This we know converges. We don't know what number it converges to, but we know that as the ratio of this thing to that thing goes to some number, it's going to go to a number roughly 3 to 2 ratio of this thing's convergence. And therefore, 3 halves of converging is equal to converging. And the same goes for diverging, right? If we had a diverging result, and this is a diverging p-series, then 3 halves of diverging is also diverging. So as long as you have a positive finite number here multiplied by your result, you're still going to have that same result with the thing that you're comparing to the series that you're interested in. That's awesome. So it's an awesome test. Let's do it one more time. So we look at this one, and we say 4 over root n squared plus 5. Well, that's a lot like 1 over root n squared, which is equal to 1 over n. And you might be like, how do you strip away all that stuff? I'm looking at this and saying what matters as we go out to infinity. The only parts that matter would be the n squared. Right? The 4 is constant. The 5 is very small. As we go out to infinity, this is all that matters. Do I know for a fact that this is more than? 1 over n series? Actually, it might actually be less than it. Might be. I'm not sure. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the limit comparison test. So I'll start out with what I'm comparing things to, like I did previously. Since the series from n equals 1 to infinity of 1 over n, you can actually state is the converging harmonic series. That would be good enough. Most people accept that we know that the harmonic series converge, or sorry, the diverging. I said converging. Ooh. You could say that this is the diverging harmonic series. That would be fine. Um, I would say is a diverging P series, or a diverging harmonic series, is a diverging P series, P equal to 1, uh, which is, of course, less than or equal to 1. And We'll take the limit now of the ratio, limit as n goes to infinity. Now I'm going to show you what I always do with these tests. I didn't do it last time. I'm going to do it this time now that we've shown things. I'm going to take the ratio of this, what I want to know about, to what I know diverges, and I'm going to multiply by the reciprocal. That's the same as dividing or putting this all over 1 over n. Might as well save some steps. This is then equal to the limit as n goes to infinity of 4n all over root n squared plus 5. Now, as we go to infinity, that 5 essentially doesn't matter. And you're basically left with 4n over n, which simplifies down to 4. So, or therefore, we've got the series n equals 1 from 4, or of 4 over root n squared plus 5, also diverges. Diverges by the limit comparison test. That is all. Isn't that sweet? I think so too. I'll put an exclamation point with a have face. Why not? So again, we've sniffed this out and we're like, ooh, I think this thing's a lot like 1 over n. So if you're taking a multiple choice test, you use that inkling test and you say, all right, all right, I know this thing's going to diverge. But here, we find out that, well, we prove first that 1 over n is diverging. You could also say it's a diverging harmonic series. And we take the ratio, the limit as n goes to infinity of 
what we have versus what we know. We get four, so this, which is a positive finite number, our original series is going to diverge by limit comparison. Again, conditions of the test, stating our conclusion, and the name of the test. Now, again, why does this make sense? We found that the ratio is four times diverging. That's essentially what we just found. We compared this to what we know, and we got four times a diverging series, which is diverging. That's not a part of your formal justification, but it certainly makes a lot of sense. And again, I'm going to remind you, if you're doing multiple choice tests, the inkling test works. You don't have to show any of this. You don't even have to do this unless you're unsure. I would look at that and say, it's basically 1 over n. It's going to diverge. All right, that'll help you a lot in the BC exam. Uh, I'm going to leave it there. That was fun. Well, I had fun. I hope you had like a tolerable time, maybe a little bit. See you next time. Peace.